Hi again. Welcome to this installment of The Resilient Entrepreneur, our program with our sponsors, The Nick, and my co author, Mark Coopersmith, on building success and surviving setbacks. In this installment, I wanted to talk about stage six in the failure value cycle. It has particular meaning to me, uh, the word rebound. I grew up in Indiana, as I mentioned in our first uh, introductory videos, I think. Um, and for those of you who have had the experience of watching high school basketball in Indiana, you know it's a special experience. When I was a freshman in high school in Evansville at Bossy High School, uh, our team went to the Final Four in Indianapolis and won the state basketball championship. And it was a huge highlight. Uh, of my high school career. Uh, my older two brothers had been high school basketball stars at Bossy. Uh, I was never that good, so all I could do was watch. <laughs> uh, but it was just a wonderful, wonderful experience and one of the great memories that I have of growing up in Indiana. So rebounds. What is it about rebounds that make it so important uh, in the failure value cycle? It's important because it gets back in us into the game right? Failures happened. Failure is going to happen. Shots are going to get missed. Passes are going to get missed. And that's the time for a rebound. That's the time when you can retake the initiative. Because this is not about wallowing in failure. It's not about, it's not about moaning about it or complaining about it. It's about figuring out how to get back in the game. And what's wonderful about a rebound is it works both offensively and defensively. Think about it for a second. If you're on the offense and your team catches a rebound, it's kept the offense alive for another shot, another play, another pass. It gives you another shot at what you were trying to do to begin with, which is to score a point or to score a sale or to get to the next stage in your business. But it also works defensively because if you're the one who's able to catch a rebound from a competitor, You've started the offense for your team. You've begun to work on the other side of the court. So it's a powerful technique. And it's a powerful thing to keep in mind when you have finished dealing with the failure of the moment. You've thought about it. You've reflected on it. And now the question is, how are you going to put that knowledge to work? A few years ago, I had a chance to be in South America when uh, one of the World Cups was happening. And I picked up the newspaper at the end of the day and saw an article about a huge upset that had happened. I can't remember if it was quarterfinal or semifinals, but a very heavily favored team had lost in a major upset. And as I was reading the article, uh, they were in the locker room, the reporter was in the locker room talking with the coach. And he said, how could that possibly have happened? Your team was heavily favored, yet you lost by two goals. What was going on? And the coach said something that just struck me then, and I've kept it with me ever since. He said, it's really very simple. We were outchanced. We were outchanced. Now think about that from the point of view of what your venture is trying to do, to keep ahead of the competition, to innovate, to experiment, as Mark and I have suggested, to try new things. Because nobody wants to fail. That's not the objective. The objective is to win. The objective is to succeed. How many experiments can you do? Well, ask yourself to mix my sports for a moment. If you're playing soccer or football, as the rest of the world knows it, which team would you rather be on? The team that tries a few shots on goal or the team that tries a lot of shots on goal? Not every shot's going to go in, but your chances of victory are probably greater on the team on the right side than on the left side. Because whether you're playing basketball or you're playing football or you're playing soccer, good things tend to happen around the goals. It tends to reward people who are good at rebounding. So consider how you can pay more attention to how quickly you can get back into the game, learning from what you just experienced, what your team just created. It was a mistake. It was a failure. You've thought about it, and now it's time to get back on the court.
get back in the game, score the points, win the business, get the customer you've been looking for, find the negotiated settlement with your supplier that you've been looking for, get back in the game and show your team that you have that kind of resilience to deal with the phenomenon we're all expert at creating, which is failure. But you figured out a way to convert it from a regret into a strategic resource. See you on our next installment. Good luck.